Today we are going to discuss about amplitude modulation technique. Before going to the details of this amplitude modulation technique, let's first consider the need for modulation. Why we are using this modulation technique in our communication system? When we consider a communication system, we need to transfer the information from one location to another location or we need to transfer the information from the transmitter side to the receiver side okay and when we consider our information signal that information signal is normally a low frequency signal for example if we are considering a voice communication system the information signal in that communication system is our voice signal okay and this voice signal is in audio frequency range and that frequency is actually a very low frequency and if we transmit this low frequency information signal directly so many issues will occur and these issues includes the antenna height problem the attenuation problem and the range problem that means if we are transmitting a low frequency signal from the transmitter the antenna height required will be very high because the minimum antenna height required at the transmitter side is lambda by 4 where lambda is the wavelength of the transmitting signal okay and if the frequency of the signal is very low its wavelength will be very high and hence the antenna height required will be very high then if we are transmitting a low frequency signal it will attenuate more then the energy content of a wave is proportional to its frequency higher the frequency larger will be the energy and hence less power is needed to cover larger service area so if you are transmitting a low frequency signal its energy will be less and hence we need to use more power to cover a larger service area so to overcome these issues that will occur if we transmit a low frequency signal a process known as modulation is employed. Modulation is the process in which the information to be transmitted is superimposed onto a high frequency carrier signal. For this it becomes necessary to modify one of the characteristics of the carrier signal by utilizing the information signal. And this carrier signal is a high frequency signal whose characteristics like amplitude, frequency or phase angle is varied in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of the modulating signal this modulating signal is our information signal okay so according to the instantaneous amplitude of our information signal one of the characteristics of the carrier signal is varied and if we are varying the amplitude of the carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of our information signal that modulation is called amplitude modulation and if we are varying the frequency of the carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of our information signal that modulation is called frequency modulation like that and this modulated carrier signal is then transmitted from the transmitter side to the receiver so here we are transmitting a high frequency signal from the transmitter to the receiver and hence the issues that we mentioned earlier will not occur here then here we are going to consider the case of amplitude modulation so let's first discuss how this amplitude modulation is done with the help of waveforms as i said earlier in the case of modulation the low frequency information signal is superimposed onto a high frequency carrier signal and in the case of amplitude modulation the amplitude of the high frequency carrier signal is varied in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of our information signal okay so this is our information signal or our modulating signal and here we can see this signal is a low frequency signal and we need to superimpose this low frequency information signal onto this high frequency carrier signal okay and here in this amplitude modulation technique we are going to change the amplitude of this carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of this modulating signal then here as a modulating signal we are considering a low frequency sinusoidal signal the peak amplitude of this sinusoidal signal is capital vm okay 
and hence we can represent this modulating signal as this small vm is equal to capital vm sin omega mt this capital vm is the peak amplitude of this modulating signal this omega m is the angular frequency of this modulating signal then when we consider this carrier signal here we can see this carrier signal is a high frequency signal okay and this vc capital vc is the peak amplitude of this carrier signal and hence we can represent this carrier wave as small vc is equal to capital vc sin omega ct this capital vc is the peak amplitude this omega c is the angular frequency of this carrier wave now in amplitude modulation technique we need to change the amplitude of this carrier wave in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of this modulating signal here we can see we are applying the modulating signal at this point okay so up to this point the modulating signal is at its zero level so when we consider an amplitude modulated wave this zero level of the modulating signal is represented by using this vc amplitude level and when the modulating signal goes on increasing from that zero level the amplitude will also increase from this vc level okay and when the amplitude of the modulating signal reaches this vm point the amplitude of the amplitude modulated wave will be at vc plus vm voltage because the zero level is represented by this vc level and when the voltage of the modulating signal reaches this vm value the amplitude of our amplitude modulated wave will be at vc plus vm okay and when the amplitude of the modulating signal goes on decreasing then the amplitude of our amplitude modulated wave also will goes on decreasing and when the amplitude of the modulating signal reaches this minus vm the amplitude of our amplitude modulated wave will be at vc minus vm okay and then that will continue so let's now consider that amplitude modulated wave our amplitude modulated wave will be like this okay as i said earlier we are applying our modulating input signal at this point so up to this point the modulating signal is at its zero level and that zero level is represented by using this vc amplitude this vc is the peak amplitude of our carrier signal okay so up to this point the amplitude will be at this vc level okay then from this point we can see the modulating input signal is increasing and according to that according to that instantaneous amplitude of the modulating signal here also the amplitude of the carrier signal is increased okay so here we can see after this point the amplitude of the carrier signal is increasing from that vc value according to this instantaneous amplitude of modulating signal okay and when the modulating signal amplitude reaches that vm value here we can see the amplitude modulated wave also reaches to its peak value okay and what will be the voltage at this point the zero voltage of the modulating signal is represented by using this vc amplitude and here the modulating signal amplitude is increased from zero to vm and hence here in this amplitude modulated wave the amplitude of the wave will increase from vc to vc plus vm and then we can see after this point the modulating signal amplitude goes on decreasing and hence here also we can see the amplitude goes on decreasing and here when the amplitude of the modulating signal reaches this minus vm point here the amplitude will be that vc minus vm because vc corresponds to our zero level and here the amplitude changes from zero to minus vm value and hence here the amplitude will change from vc to vc minus vm value and after this point we can see the modulating signal amplitude goes on increasing here also the amplitude goes on increasing okay so when we consider this amplitude modulated wave here we can see the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal here we can see this envelope is exactly same as that of this one so here we can see this information is superimposed onto this high frequency carrier signal this low frequency information is superimposed onto this high frequency carrier signal okay 
Then when we consider this amplitude modulated wave, when the amplitude of the carrier signal is increasing, it will increase in both sides. Okay, if the amplitude of this wave is increased, it will increase in this positive side and also it will increase in this negative side. Okay, so when the amplitude is increasing here in the positive side, here the amplitude is increasing in the negative side. So when the amplitude here goes on increasing, here the amplitude will goes on decreasing. And when the amplitude here goes on decreasing, here the amplitude will goes on increasing. Okay, so this envelope will be exactly opposite to that of this one. So this one is the complete amplitude modulated wave. This envelope will be exactly same as that of this one, and this envelope will be opposite to that of this one. Okay, so this is the shape of an amplitude modulated wave. So now here the information is in the instantaneous amplitude of this amplitude modulated wave and we are transmitting this amplitude modulated wave from the transmitter and here we can see the frequency of this amplitude modulated wave is high frequency okay the frequency is greater than this one and this information is available here as the amplitude change okay so that low frequency information is superimposed onto a high frequency carrier signal and by transmitting this amplitude modulated wave the problems due to low frequency transmission are removed now when we consider this amplitude modulated wave here this level represents the zero level and this is our vc level the capital vc level corresponds to that zero amplitude level of the modulating signal and this is our peak amplitude of the amplitude modulated wave and that peak amplitude will be this vc plus capital v okay and this level represents the minimum amplitude of the modulating signal and that amplitude corresponds to Vc minus Vm. Okay, so when we consider this amplitude level, this will be Vm. Okay, the peak amplitude of our modulating signal. Okay, so this will be Vm and from here to here, it will be also Vm. Okay, then this Vmax represents the peak amplitude of this amplitude modulated wave this Vmax actually corresponds to this Vc plus Vm voltage level okay and this V minimum represents this voltage level from 0 to this point okay now when we consider this envelope as I said earlier this amplitude is changing in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal so we can write the equation for this envelope as capital Vc plus capital Vm sin omega empty okay because it is changing from that Vc value and its instantaneous amplitude depends upon the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal is Vm sin omega empty okay so we can represent this envelope as capital Vc plus Vm sin omega empty then when we consider this side here this level represents our minus Vc level and this amplitude level will be minus of Vc plus Vm. Then we can write the equation for this envelope as minus of Vc plus Vm sin omega empty. As I said earlier, this one is just opposite to that of this one. So when we consider this section, the equations will be just negative of the equations here. Okay, so the amplitude here will be minus of Vc plus Vm and the equation here will be minus of this one, minus of Vc plus Vm sin omega mt. Let's now derive the equation for this amplitude modulated wave. So now we are going to consider the analysis and frequency spectrum of amplitude modulated carrier wave. As we said earlier, we can represent the carrier signal as small Vc is equal to capital Vc into sin omega ct and we can represent our modulating or our information signal as small Vm is equal to capital Vm sin omega mt. Here when we consider this equation, this small Vc represents the instantaneous amplitude of the carrier signal and this capital Vc represents the peak amplitude of the carrier signal and this omega c is the angular frequency of our carrier signal okay and this small vm represents the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal this capital vm represents the peak amplitude of our modulating signal and this omega m is the 
angular frequency of our modulating signal. Then we know in amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied by the modulating voltage. So the amplitude of the amplitude modulated wave is given by A is equal to Vc plus Vm, capital Vc plus small Vm. Because when we consider the amplitude modulated wave, here we can see the amplitude of this wave is changing according to the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal. What is the instantaneous amplitude of this modulating signal? It is capital Vm sin omega mt. Okay, And here this amplitude is changing from this Vc value. Okay, So we can write the equation for the amplitude of this amplitude modulated wave as this Vc plus instantaneous value of this modulating signal or we can write it as capital Vc plus capital Vm sin omega mt or capital Vc plus small Vm. Okay, So that equation is shown here. The amplitude of the amplitude modulated wave is given by capital Vc plus instantaneous value of our modulating signal. Okay, And that is equal to capital Vc plus capital Vm sin omega mt. Then from this equation we can take this capital Vc outside then we will get Vc into 1 plus Vm by Vc sin omega mt. Okay? And this Vm by Vc is represented by small m which is called the modulation index. Okay? And this modulation index is a number lying between 0 and 1 and it is often expressed as a percentage and called the percentage modulation. In the case of this amplitude modulation, this modulation index value is very important. We will discuss about the importance of this modulation index later. Okay, So here just understand that this Vm by Vc is our modulation index and that is represented by using small letter m. Okay, So we can rewrite this equation as A is equal to Vc into 1 plus m sin omega mt. Okay? And that equation is this one. A is equal to capital Vc into 1 plus small m sin omega mt. Then the instantaneous voltage of the resulting amplitude modulated wave is given by small vam is equal to capital A sin omega ct. Because this represents our amplitude of the modulated wave. And what is the frequency of our modulated wave? It is the carrier frequency omega c. Let's consider that waveform again. Here we can see the amplitude is changing according to the instantaneous amplitude of our modulating signal and hence that amplitude can be represented by using this equation. And what is the frequency? It is the frequency of this high frequency carrier signal. Okay, And that frequency is omega c. Okay, So here we got the amplitude as Vc into 1 plus m sin omega mt and the frequency of that amplitude modulated signal is omega c. Hence, we can represent the instantaneous voltage of the amplitude modulated wave as this A sin omega ct. Then substitute for this A value. Then we can rewrite this equation as this Vc into 1 plus m sin omega mt into sin omega ct. Now we are going to remove this bracket and we are going to multiply this with this Vc and sin omega ct. Then what we will get? The first term will be Vc sin omega ct plus the second term will be Vc m sin omega ct into sin omega mt. Okay? So let's consider that equation. So we can rewrite that Vam as Vam is equal to Vc sin omega ct plus m vc sin omega ct into sin omega mt. Now when we consider this term, here we have this sin omega ct into sin omega mt term. We know sin a sin b is equal to cos a minus b minus cos a plus b divided by 2. And we are going to apply this condition here. So by using this, we can rewrite this sin omega ct into sin omega mt as cos omega ct minus omega mt minus 
cos omega ct plus omega mt divided by 2. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation as Vam is equal to Vc sin omega ct plus mvc into cos omega c minus omega m into t minus cos omega c plus omega m into t divided by 2. Okay. Now I am going to remove this bracket and I am going to multiply this mvc with these two terms. Okay. Then I will get mvc by 2 cos omega c minus omega m into t minus mvc by 2 cos omega c plus omega m into t. Okay. So I can rewrite this equation as this vam small vam is equal to vc sin omega ct plus mvc by 2 into cos omega c minus omega m into t minus mvc by 2 into cos omega c plus omega m into t. Okay. So this is the final equation for our amplitude modulated wave. When we consider this equation, this equation consists of three terms. Okay. This is the first term. When we consider this first term, it is capital VC sin omega ct. And we know this is the equation for our carrier signal. Okay. So this term actually represents our carrier signal. So that exact carrier component is present in our amplitude modulated signal. Now when we consider this second term, here this term is MVC by 2 cos omega c minus omega m into t. So when we consider this cosine component, its peak amplitude is MVC by 2 and what is its frequency? It is omega c minus omega m. So this term represents the lower sideband component because its frequency is less than this omega c. Okay. And when we consider this third term, it is MVC by 2 cos omega c plus omega m into t. So when we consider this component, its peak amplitude is MVC by 2 and what is its frequency? It is omega c plus omega m. Its frequency is greater than omega c. So this component represents our upper sideband component. So when we consider an amplitude modulated wave, that amplitude modulated wave consists of these three components. A carrier component, a lower sideband component and an upper sideband component. So in this amplitude modulated wave, that carrier signal is exactly present here. And in addition to that, a lower sideband component and an upper sideband component is present. So the equation of this amplitude modulated wave is this one. Now if we need, we can represent this first term as small letter Vc. This is our carrier part. Okay, And we can represent this term as small V LSB, the lower sideband component. And we can represent this term as small V USB, our upper sideband component. Then we can represent this in terms of Fc and Fm. We know omega is 2 pi f. Okay. So when we substitute 2 pi f for this omega, then we can write this one as Vc sin 2 pi Fc into t. And for this term, we can write Mvc by 2 into cos 2 pi Fc minus 2 pi Fm into t. Or we can take that 2 pi outside and we can write MVC by 2 cos 2 pi into FC minus FM into T. And we can write this term as MVC by 2 into cos 2 pi FC plus FM into T. So here we have a difference frequency term and here we have a sum frequency term. And here we can see the amplitude of these two components depends upon the modulation index M. Okay, the amplitude of these sidebands are MVC by 2 and the value of M should not go above 1. Its maximum value is 1. What will happen if the value of this modulation index goes above 1? Let's consider that waveform again. So this is our amplitude modulated wave and we know this is our VC amplitude. From here to here it is VC. Okay, and from here to here we have VM amplitude. And we know M is Vm divided by Vc. And when M is equal to 1, that Vm is equal to Vc. So when this Vm is equal to Vc, what will happen? This coil will touch 
at this zero level because this vm and vc are same so this point will touch the zero level and what will happen if we increase the m value greater than 1 this point will go beyond that zero level okay so it will go below that zero level or we can say this portion will be cut off as the m value goes on increasing the more portions will be cut off from this side okay and hence we will not be able to extract the actual information signal from the modulated wave okay because when we consider that amplitude modulated wave there won't be the negative portion of this envelope okay and also there won't be the positive portion of this envelope so we need to keep the m value between 0 and 1 it cannot be go above 1 now we are going to consider the frequency spectrum of the am wave when we consider the equation for the am wave as i said earlier it consists of three parts a carrier component a lower sideband component and an upper sideband component then when we consider the frequency spectrum we need to plot that three components so here we can see this one represents our carrier component the amplitude of this portion is vc capital vc okay so this is at frequency fc then when we consider this lower sideband component it is at frequency fc minus fo okay so we need to plot that lower sideband component here so this is fm frequency so at this point we have fc minus fm and here we have this lower sideband component and what is the amplitude of that lower sideband component it is mvc by 2 it is less than this vc okay so the level should be less than this carrier component then when we consider this upper sideband component what is the frequency it is fc plus fm so it should be here this is our fm frequency so fc plus fm comes here and what is the amplitude of that one it is also mvc by okay so the amplitude of this lower sideband and upper sideband should be same and these two amplitudes are at mvc by 2 and lower sideband is at frequency fc minus fm upper sideband is at frequency fc plus fm and at the center we have this carrier component and the amplitude of this carrier component is vc so this amplitude should be greater than these two okay then we know the frequencies present in the am wave are the carrier frequency and the first pair of sideband frequencies where a sideband frequency is defined as f sideband is equal to fc plus or minus n fm and in first pair n is equal to 1 because here we have only one lower sideband and one upper sideband okay so here we have only first pair of sideband frequencies so this n is 1 and for upper sideband it will be fc plus fm and for lower sideband it will be fc minus fm so by using this general equation we can represent the sideband frequencies present in the am wave now by using this frequency spectrum we can calculate the bandwidth required for this am wave what is the bandwidth required for this am wave it is fc plus fm minus fc minus fm okay so the bandwidth required is fc plus fm minus fc minus fm and that is equal to 2 times fm so the bandwidth required for am is twice the frequency of the modulating signal let's now consider the time domain representation of our am wave and let's derive another equation for modulation index m we have already studied the time domain representation of our am wave this is the time domain representation of am wave now from this figure we can write v max minus v minimum is equal to 2 vm so consider this figure in this figure v max is this one okay and v minimum is this one okay and here we have vm and here also we have vm so what is v max minus v minimum this v max minus v minimum is this one so v max minus v minimum is 2 vm okay so from this figure we can write v max minus v minimum is equal to 2 vm or we can write vm is equal to v max minus v minimum divided by 2 okay then also from the figure we can write vc is equal to v max minus vm consider that figure again so here we can see 
this is our Vmax okay from here to here we have Vmax so Vmax minus Vm this is our Vm so Vmax minus Vm what is that voltage it is our VC voltage okay so Vmax minus Vm is VC so from this figure we can also write VC is equal to Vmax minus Vm then for this Vm substitute this equation okay so we can write Vmax minus Vmax minus V minimum divided by 2 then opening the brackets and taking LCM we can write uh, that LCM is 2 so here we will get 2 Vmax minus Vmax plus V minimum divided by 2 okay then this 2 Vmax minus Vmax is Vmax okay so we can write Vc is equal to Vmax plus V minimum divided by 2 now we know Vm is equal to MVC or M is equal to Vm by Vc so to get M we need to divide Vm equation by using Vc so equation for Vm is this one V max minus V minimum divided by 2 and equation for VC is this one V max plus V minimum divided by 2 okay so equation 11 divided by equation 13 then what we will get it will be M is equal to Vm by Vc and that is equal to V max minus V minimum divided by 2 divided by V max plus V minimum divided by 2. We can cancel this 1 by 2 term from numerator and denominator. Hence, we will get the modulation index M is equal to Vm by Vc is equal to V max minus V minimum divided by V max plus V minimum. This equation is the standard method for evaluating the modulation index when calculating from a waveform such as may be seen on an oscilloscope. That is when both the carrier and the modulating voltages are known. We will discuss about the power relations in the case of AM wave in our next class.